Let's talk Tanya for the 10th of Nisan. In the last days, we're talking about the Gan Eden that a person receives, that, uh, where the soul goes to after the soul departs the body. And we spoke about two primary levels of Gan Eden and then an even higher level for the greatest of tzaddikim. And the obvious question that needs to be asked over here is, why is this important? Uh, as many of you might know, in Chabad, in general, the concept of Gan Eden and reward we don't focus on it that much. We're focused on the here, on the now. What does God want of me to do today? Uh, what's required of me? And thinking too much about Gan Eden, in fact, is, uh, it's a selfish endeavor. What am I getting out of it? So why did we just spend a few days talking about the Gan Eden, which people will receive after the soul departs the body? In today's Tanya, the Alter Rebbe addresses that. And the Alter Rebbe says, he says important words. He says, "Vihine schar mitzvah mitzvah pirush shemischara neda muhusa umadrigasa," which means the mitzvah produces its own reward, and therefore, by understanding the reward, we can have a deeper understanding of the mitzvah itself. What does that mean? Ordinarily, when you look at the reward for something, it doesn't tell you much about uh, the nature of the work that went into receiving that reward. So for example, let's say you're an accountant or you're a doctor or whatever it may be, you're a contractor and you get a paycheck. Can I look at the paycheck and say, oh, I know you're an accountant or I know you're a doctor? No, because there's no connection between the work that you did and the compensation that you received, the reward that you received. In fact, it's possible for someone to do an accounting job or a medical job and not to get paid at all. Why? Because the work doesn't produce the reward. The reward is extrinsic. Sometimes, however, the reward is not extrinsic. The reward is an outcome of the work. So, for example, let's say you built for yourself a house. So what is the reward? The reward is that you have a house. I can actually now go and examine the reward, in other words, examine the house, and figure out the nature of the work that went into it because they're, they're tied together. A mitzvah produces its reward. And therefore, when I look at the reward, I can actually have a deeper understanding of the mitzvah itself. So when I say that when I do a mitzvah in this way, I go to the lower level of Gan Eden, if I do it in another way with a different type of kavanah, I go to a higher level of Gan Eden, that gives me an understanding of the value of the mitzvah, and that's what's important. It's not the Gan Eden that's, impor that's important. It's our understanding of Gan Eden which sheds light on the value of the mitzvah itself, which is important. When I do a mitzvah in a certain way with a certain kavana, my mitzvah is on the level of the world of Yitzira, which is why the neshama afterwards will go to the lower level of Gan Eden. If I do it with a higher level of intent and kavana, then my mitzvah is a higher mitzvah. It's a mitzvah on the level of the world of Bria, which is why a person who does a mitzvah in that way, afterwards their soul will go to the higher level because again, the reward is an outcome of the mitzvah. So it's important to us over here is not so much the level of Gan Eden, because with that we understand what our reward is, but rather what's important to us over here is to understand what is the value of the mitzvah, understanding that different mitzvahs are on different levels, and I want to do a mitzvah on a higher level. Well, up until now, we've been talking about if I have intent on this level, then the neshama goes to this level of Gan Eden, etc., etc., and also teaching us about the value of the mitzvah itself, but what if someone does a mitzvah without kavana, without love for God, without awe for God? What is the level of the mitzvah then? And that will be the discussion, God willing, in the Let's Talk Tanya for tomorrow.